Hey guys, this is Dan Watson with LearningCameras.com and we're going to take a break from cameras and lenses and take a look at a different product, the Motorola 360. And with an increasing amount of smartwatches on the market, Motorola's really separated itself with a circular watch design and kind of aims to bring a little bit different to the table in the smartwatch world. So let's take a look at the Motorola 360 and see if they can deliver on that promise. Now the Motorola 360 is a looker of a watch. It is instantly recognizable as something different, yet it doesn't give that same tech freak response that I got when I was using the Samsung smartwatches. The round screen seems to add just the right amount of flair while still blending in with more traditional watches. I didn't find the watch overly large, but then again I'm a particular fan of large watches, so it's a bit on the thick side, but nothing outlandish. Even my wife seems satisfied with the design and size if she could pair it with a little bit more feminine looking band. The Moto 360 is definitely a well-made watch and the band is very comfortable and much better than the rubber on many of the other smart watches. That said, it's still the cheapest looking part of the watch. The beveled glass on the top is a nice touch, but it leads to a bit of distortion on the edge of a screen and can be a little bit distracting when viewing text. Even the wireless charger is a joy to use as it makes it feel like a nice rubberized heavy plastic and it has a great design and functionality. And if nothing else, it's a good old fashioned clock when charging. Overall, the Moto 360 is a great blend of modern tech and traditional styling. As a watch wearer myself, this is the first watch that has really satisfied both my love for watches and tech. The interface is fast enough, though there definitely is some lag when loading applications. It's not enough to make me disappointed, but it's enough to make me long for a version 2. The screen gives the same impression as text is sharp enough to be legible, though the individual pixels can definitely be seen from a closer distance. That black bar at the bottom of the display that has been really the source of quite some negative chatter. It would be awesome if it wasn't there, but I didn't find it very distracting unless you were using a white background with the round watch faces. It also houses the ambient light sensor, which keeps the screen from overpowering your eyes in the darkness and keeps everything visible outdoors. It worked all right, but I do think it should be a little bit brighter. And this brings in the biggest problem with the watch. There's really just so little room for customization. You can't toggle the sensitivity or brightness of the ambient light sensor like most phones allow you to do. You can't touch the screen time out of a display and you only have seven choices for your watch face as of now. Motorola does allow you to choose between white and black backgrounds with most of the watch faces and also gives you a little bit of an accent color for the second hand, but that's all you get. At almost every point, you feel like the watch is doing what Moto or Google wants you to do and not necessarily what you want it to do. The 360 also has a heart rate monitor, which I found did work better than the Samsung Gear watches. However, apps like the heart rate monitor are buried under swipes and taps, making them a pain to access, except by voice. An incoming call also caused the watch to vibrate louder than it should and there's really no way to change this unlike my phone. This meant that everyone around me could usually tell when I was receiving a phone call and that's just not the response I was looking for in a smartwatch. Battery life is an issue with most smartwatches and the 360 was no exception. You'll definitely struggle to go through an entire 24 hour day with a working watch, even with the screen turning off. With moderate to heavy usage, I averaged about 16 hours and through milder usage I was able to make it to around 18. But even at 16 hours, pulling my watch off a charger at 7am meant I still had battery to spare by 11pm. Now I don't know about you, but I typically do not wear my watch that long. I did feel like I was constantly being reminded though of how weak the battery was with only seconds to spare between when the screen would try to time out and with no way of controlling it. Warning labels also pop up when you enable the always on screen which even then just dims the screen to the point where it's barely visible, making it about useless. In its current state, the 360 was definitely able to make it through a normal day with normal activity, though in the future it would be nice if the same one day battery also included the always on feature at a usable brightness or at least longer screen use before timing out. On the software side, Motorola definitely has some limited abilities due to the tight control of Android Wear, and other than a great looking heart rate app, and a few well-designed watch face options, it's all pretty much stock. Unfortunately, that's not a great thing as of now as Android Wear is definitely limited with few supported apps and interface that really buries them in a menu system. Offering almost no customization other than muting certain apps altogether, Android Wear features can really be boiled down to just notifications and Google Now. 
While Google Now is extremely powerful, I couldn't help but notice the lack of other abilities even compared to the Galaxy Gear watches. In addition, Google Now only works using your voice, meaning you'll be talking to your watch quite a bit to use it. The round display worked well enough with Android Wear, but there were definitely examples of text clipping that were a bit annoying. Also, notifications from apps and Google Now cards take up the bottom third of a screen, making it just about impossible to actually see the time with any round watch face. Moving to a digital clock fixed the issue, but it seems to take away some of the appeal of the round watch. And with zero control over how I get my notifications, the barrage of hundreds of emails I typically get in a day caused me to actually mute the Gmail app entirely. Without a method of controlling what types of emails or Gmail labels can get to my watch, for example, many will find that notifications are more of a hindrance than a joy. For a smart watch, honestly, it acts a bit dumb. Overall, the Moto 360 is the best hardware around, and while at times it does feel a bit first generation, it's certainly good enough to be a great addition to your watches as well as your tech toys. The wireless charger is great and the overall fit and finish is top notch. Now the software does need a ton of help, but Google Now is extremely powerful by itself and answers just about, question, just about any question you can have for it. And in addition, the Motorola 360 will serve as a great source for information as well as a companion with note taking, reminders, calendars, notifications, navigation, music players, and you even have the ability to compose messages and emails straight from the watch by voice. Sure, you will be charging the 360 about every day and the screen turning off all the time is a bit of a disappointment, but as of now, if you love watches, want the power of Google Now on your wrist, and you don't mind talking to your watch, the Motorola 360 is an amazing device.